Hello everyone! Today I'm going to show you how I make these cute little Christmas puddings out of polymer clay, which make great pieces of festive jewellery or even just Christmas decorations. Okay, so the first thing you'll want to do is make the raisins for your Christmas pudding. So to do this, I'm just mixing together some translucent white, black and a little bit of translucent purple until they're fully combined. I'm then rolling the mixed clay out into a long thin sausage and cutting it up into lots of smaller segments. And don't worry if the small segments are slightly different lengths or different thicknesses. I actually prefer them to be a range of sizes because then you get a bit of variation in your raisins. Next I'm taking a piece of tin foil which I've crumpled up and then flattened out again to get a rough texture and I'm rolling my little segments into balls and just pushing them gently onto the tin foil. I'm then adding a bit of texture to the top of the raisins by rolling a small, roughly crumpled up ball of tin foil over the top of them. If you want to, you can also add some texture with an X-Acto knife or a thin blade um, by just making a few raisin wrinkle lines like I'm doing here. So I'm just cutting a few lines into the very top layer of the clay. I also randomly pushed in the edges of some of the raisins to make them slightly different shapes and to give them a bit more variation. Okay, so once all your raisins are textured, you can pop the piece of tin foil in the oven and bake them for around 20 minutes or so. Just be careful when you do this because you don't want any of the little pieces of clay to fall off in your oven and then burn next time you cook food. While the raisins are cooking, you can move on to making the main body of the Christmas pudding. Again, I'm using a slightly crumpled piece of tin foil to make the pudding on, and this is just to give it a bit of texture on the bottom. I also find it's much easier to shape the pudding on the surface you'll actually be baking it on, especially if you're working with a softer brand of clay like Sculpey 3, so you don't have to worry about deforming the shape of the pudding when you transfer it to your um, baking surface. To make the body of the Christmas pudding, you can use any shade of brown you like, I've just made this colour up by mixing together a few different kinds of brown I had left in my scrap clay box and then adding a bit of translucent to them. So to make the Christmas pudding shape, just roll your brown clay into a ball, put it on your tin foil, and then start gently pushing down the edges so you almost get a rounded trapezium kind of shape. You'll also want to flatten the top of the pudding down a little as well. Once you're happy with the rough shape of your pudding, you can add some texture to it. I'm just using an old toothbrush to give a bit of texture to the sides and the top of the pudding. I'm then rolling a little ball of tin foil over the pudding shape to add a bit more texture, just like I did with the raisins. This next step is completely optional, you can just leave your pudding as it is, but to make it look a little bit more interesting, I'm just cutting out a small hole in the pudding with my X-Acto knife, so it looks like someone's eaten a big spoonful of pudding. And then I'm just using the knife to texture the edges and the inside of the hole I've just made. So this is what the pudding looks like so far, a bit of a, a messy blob basically. The next step is to make a few little pieces of suet for the pudding, so I'm just using some translucent clay for this. I'm just rolling out a long thin sausage and then cutting small lengths of the translucent clay and then just placing them at random points on my pudding. And because Christmas puddings aren't all one colour, I'm taking a lighter brown clay and repeating the same process I used to make the suet, 
then just pressing the lengths of light brown clay into the pudding and again this just gives it a little bit more variation. So here you go, this is what it looks like now. Just a slightly more interesting blob than it was before. Alright, now it's time to place the raisins into the pudding. I'm just picking the raisins off of the tin foil with a pair of tweezers and then finding random places on the pudding to push the cooked raisins into. I'm putting quite a lot of raisins in the hole that I made because if you cut into a real Christmas pudding you can see that it's mostly just made of raisins and currants. So I'm just trying to replicate that look. You could of course put anything you wanted inside your pudding. You could make some little cherry pieces out of red clay for example, um, or some orange rind pieces, really anything you like. So now I've put as many raisins as I want to into the pudding. I'm just going to store the leftover raisins in a small vial for the next time I make a Christmas pudding. And this is what the pudding looks like with the raisins added. Okay, so now I'm just touching up the shape and texture of the pudding for a final time before I move on to making the icing. I'm using some white clay to make my icing, but white chalk pastels would also work fine. So I'm just cutting the clay up into tiny pieces before pouring over a good amount of Fimo Deco Gel. Um, or you could use any translucent liquid clay brand that you have. Then I'm just using a ball tool to help me mix the icing until it's a nice even colour and there are no unmixed bits of clay left. So now the icing is mixed, I'm taking a flat blade and loading it up with icing by just scraping it off of my work surface. And I'm then using a pointer tool to help me to distribute the icing on the top of the pudding. Next, I'm just spreading the icing down the sides of the pudding so it looks like it's just been poured on the top and then dripped down. Again, I like to store my excess icing in a little vial so that it's ready for next time I make a pudding. If you want to make your pudding into a charm, now's a good point to put your eye pin in. The Deco Gel is actually quite good at helping to seal and fix the eye pin in place, so you don't really have to worry about it coming loose for these puddings. Okay, we're almost there. For a finishing touch, I'm flattening out a mixture of translucent and Fimo opal green clay, and then cutting out two holly leaf shapes with my X-Acto knife, and pressing them gently onto the top of the pudding. Don't worry if your leaf shapes aren't perfect. They're so small that you only really need to hint at the shape and they'll still look quite effective. Finally, I'm just taking some red and translucent clay mixed together and rolling it into three tiny balls to make the holly berries, then gently pushing them onto the pudding in between the leaves. So that's the Christmas pudding all done. It now just needs to bake in the oven for around half an hour at 110 degrees or whatever your package of clay suggests. And this is what it looks like when it's finished baking. I'm now just neatening it up by cutting and smoothing the edges where the icing is pooled at the bottom of the pudding.
Finally, I'm adding some gloss glaze to all of the visible raisins and also to the icing, but not to any of the main pudding body itself. It's just because that's how I prefer it to look, but you can glaze the whole thing if you want to. So that's my tutorial on how to make a Christmas pudding. I hope you enjoyed this video and have fun making your own clay puddings. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.